one thing that does seem to get bites, even when the water goes clear and things slow down, is your good old maggots. And um, something I've played about with for a good few years, I've tried the maggot liner, you know, it's, it's a good rig. It can be a bit of a tricky rig to use on waters where you've got a lot of small fish because you're using very small bait with just a lot of, you know, a couple of maggots with a plastic grub, so you, you risk cooking roach. I mean, one tip I'll give you is to probably, if there's a lot of small fish and you want to use maggot liners, to use a running lead so you know whether you've got a roach or a perch or something that's hung itself, but that's not what we're talking about today, really. It's, um, one of my friends, like, um, Dave Benton, he's a very good maggot angler. Me and him was doing a lot of fishing a few years ago, and we ended up having to use Medusa rigs to stop what I just mentioned, a lot of small fish picking at our baits, plus we wanted to leave them out all night with bags and stuff, so... Uh, we both favour braided hook links, very supple, because you're fishing the bag, fish is feeding around the bag, picking up all the bits and bobs and you hook them as they move off basically, so you need a nice supple braid, so that was what we favoured. Problem with that was on a Medusa, if you just got a ring tied on the hair, is the ball of maggots would roll, you know, they're all squirming about, like a Medusa, and they would eventually catch the braid and roll the hair up, affecting your hooking potential. So we had to get over that. First, we played about with different bits of silicon, shrink tube, and that just above the ring where you tie the maggots on the ball of maggots. And in the end, we sort of come up with we're missing a point here. There's loads of plastic maggots. We played with that, and basically, we come up with putting a little split in the bottom of the maggots, threading the braid through it. You pull, pull the ring just so it goes into the bottom of the plastic maggot. So it just neatens it up, really. And, well, our favoured was pretty much just a standard no-knot on the back of a swept shank hook locker mugger. Or, you know, if you want to use a straight shank hook, you'd use an incisor with maybe a bit of sh shrink tubing or another maggot placed uh, maggot liner style on it. But this is basically the most simple way we fished it. But that plastic maggot stopped the hair getting rolled up and you know, your hooking efficiency is good. I know in cold water maggots slow down, but when you're leaving them out overnight, they still get, can tangle up if you don't have that, as we call it, anti-roll bar. But yeah, moving along, fully braided hook link onto a swivel. I'll fish these rotary rig style helicopter. I don't use lead clips or, you know, wrap round in lines or anything. Cause basically, I found that maggots tend to work well in waters with very little weed in it in them so really there's no point in dumping the lead on a weed free water is there so you know, you know that's my line of thinking uh, other than that whatever length lead cord you like to use just to pin things down on the bottom in the area and really i've had some leads made a good few years ago by a mate of mine they've got like a, a loop at each end the obviously the top loops to attach your lead core to the bottom loop is you know i'll show you in a bit it's basically you, you tie your bags, your bag to it, and um, obviously fully braided rigs awkward to cast out about tangles. You just nick the hook in the bottom of the bag, in the side of the bag. It all keeps everything in line for the cast. Settles down on the bottom. Jobs are good and really. If I was to be fishing over spotted out maggots and not bag fishing, I'd tend to use like a coated braid and just leave the last bit sort of available. You know, you know, like supple, so you've got the movement by the hook, really, basically to keep that anti-tangle. Or just nick like a little golf ball size bag on just to keep them apart in flight. So basically that's my little, you know, how I like to fish my maggots if I'm leaving the rig out overnight. The only thing I'd probably add to it is a little bit of attraction like crumbed up boilies or a bit of liver powder. That'd be it really, but worth looking into as the water temperatures start to plummet. So give it a try.